Good morning. Hi. Well, um, I'm actually going to go on a site today to commission um, an inverter connected to a generator. So I don't often go on the site, but um, I'm going to try and do a lot more site visits and try to update and try to show people the best way and good practice. So I got some basic tools, screwdriver, multimeter, obviously for checking things, but I've got the most important tool the instruction manual. <laughs> so a lot of people, you know, I always say to people, familiarise yourself with everything. Don't go on a site unless you're clear, you've, you've used the equipment, test it in your workshop first. Don't just turn up and try and test it and try and understand it while you're on site because it can be a little bit embarrassing. But the instruction manual is important. What I've actually done is I've, um, and this is just really for everyone's reference, I've highlighted the important things. I'm going to be using a generator. So I've highlighted the connections for the generator in the instruction manual, so it's very clear. Um, I've also, which is really important, I've actually got a set of instruction manual for the battery here as well, because people forget about the battery. And so the system's got two in parallel, so I've actually highlighted on the instruction manual the settings for the parallel setting for two batteries, so I know exactly where the dip switches are. I've also here, I've highlighted the canvas setting and the cable setting for the battery. So everything is all marked up. So when I get there, it'll be very easy um, to, to, as a reference. But this is the most important tool you can take is your instruction manual. Uh, because you know, you don't want to be getting there and say, well, how to do this, how to do that. It's all, you should be totally familiar with it. And if you're unsure, you know, ask the questions before you get to the site and test everything. So. I'm going to do that today and hopefully uh, everything will follow and I'm hoping we've got a few issues uh, and the installer's done a couple of things wrong um, and that way we can sort of typically find the problems but when I get there the first thing I will do is check the communication with the battery make sure the battery is working because if you haven't got communication with the battery then everything else is is a problem so we, we check the, the battery comms and yeah, follow with me and hopefully um, my tips may be useful or may not be useful. So we're just heading to the site. This is in the UK. Um, so we'll look at this, this site and have a look. It's, a, it's actually a system running off a generator, so it's a, quite remote and it's totally off grid. So just arrived here. Um, they've got a, a generator some, some distance away and uh, they've got a cable connecting it to so they've got a communication cable and um, the power of the generator so we're going to test the generator first thing i actually asked have you tested the ats is working so they haven't we haven't actually done that yet so we're going to test the, the ats so it means we know when we close the connections on the ats generate start up open the connections generator stops so we can check that is functioning it's the first thing we can check really so we're going to do that and then this is just actually a remote really in the woods you can see it's a totally remote site. They've got a little generator running at the moment to house a small um, cafe area. And they've got the batteries inside the, the van. Uh, we've got the inverter at the back, so you'll see a little bit as we connect it up. But I think the most important thing, first of all, before we do anything at all, let's make sure the generator works because without a, a power source, then, uh, then we're wasting our time. Check. All we need to do is make sure this is the, this is the remote controller. Mm. And so, yeah, 230 two volt out. Um, it's a nice piece of kit. Yeah, it looks really nice. Um, so this, so we, this is, a, so we're basically on. Um, so if you if you short the, the remote, um, the thing should start up. So it's a nice journey. Mm. So is that? Yeah, Graham. Could you yeah. could you short it? Just just short the connection now. It's switched on. It's on. Yeah. See if it just starts up. a minor technicality the emergency stop button was pressed that's okay not a big deal um, in fact it, it seems to have, it, it seems to have worked up a little bit now so it looks like it's going to do something so um since the controller is switched on so hopefully this will start up once he shorts it together it's um out of diesel <laughs> Tested the, the signal's working, so that's good. Um, 
you've you not, not much fuel in it or is it loaded? No, what happened was you, you knew you were coming this morning yeah. and I said we're, we're commissioning the whole lot and then the, the owner, he went, oh, um, I've got to go and get some diesel for, for uh, the Jenny and I went, has it got any in it? He said, well, I'm, I'm not sure, it's low. Then after that I said, well, I'll go and get some diesel because you were coming. Yes, yeah. And then I thought, well, okay. We're just going to check the batteries and check uh, the communications because I think the next thing is, as I mentioned before, if you're going to go on any system, first thing is check your batteries and check your communication. So the batteries are actually inside here. You've uh, got two batteries and these are uh, the Sunsun battery, which is the same configuration that needs that energy. So these are our uh, KTEL batteries. So we're going to check these and we're just going to um, make sure the settings are correct. So, okay. Yeah. okay, now uh, now before you connect them, yeah. we have to get the communication cables connected. So there is a, there is a small cable that would join the two batteries together. That's a communication cable. Right. Now, is it one of these here? Yeah. You, you see, yeah. if you, if, yeah. You, yeah. And connect to the I'm other same one. Same with it down there, yeah. same one there. You can, yeah. Because we're using two batteries, one of the batteries has to be a master and one of them has to be a slave. So there's dip switches on the batteries. Now, where's the manual that I brought in before? Oh, you brought in? Yeah. Sorry. Is that right? Yeah. Is that manual? So what, what I show you on here, I'm, I marked everything to make it really nice and, nice and easy to follow. So if you see on here, so there's dip switches. This is so here is two in parallel. So that switches up, and you see you can, see, you can just about see the switches with how the switches so are marked. What are these now? Oh so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. one is the master. So we'll, we'll use the top one as the master. So the dip switches are on the top so, one. So, so, that's, can, so basically, all down bar the switch number two is up. Yeah. All down except switch number two is up. Nice. Okay. Now the bottom one, you can see the switches. Um, one, one, two, one, two are one or two are up. One or two are up. Yeah. Okay. So this is quite. This is quite important. It's quite important. Okay. So the next thing is, is you've got the you've got the other communication cable. There's two two ends to the cable. So one is to the one is to the battery, and you can see the mark separately. Uh, one says BMS. Now that side is the battery. And that side is the inverter. So this needs to be routed to the inverter, plugged into the right. inverter. Okay. And this side goes into the battery. Yeah, no alarm. No alarm, no. Right, so that means the battery. So there's no so if you switch the two batteries on, there's no alarm, the batteries should be talking to each other. So we can test at the inverter side now and see what we get there. Um, we have a turn the we turn the we, we, we turn the box on in a second. Right, SAC 40%. So showing the batteries at the bottom shaft. What, what, the, the communication was working, but it was actually set on lithium rather than on the, the battery. So now I connect it to lithium, I connect it onto the canvas, and we've got capacity here. In fact, what you have, we've actually got um, capacity to a background chain, metal discharge, metal discharge points here. Um, Got some discharge plates there, which is the two batteries, so you're okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, so all, all goes over. So that's, that's very important because if you if you haven't got communication on the battery, then anything else that we're doing is a waste of time. We've actually got it right the first time. So the batteries are now talking to each other, and if you have a look at the screen, so it's a simple way, all I said is system. So I'm going to put the data logger in here, once the generator's on, 
and I think some of the batteries are you know, the batteries are showing 40%, so they're quite low. And we're, then we will update um, we'll update the uh, the system. And so once we update it, then we should be good to go look at the programming. The noise behind us is an auxiliary generator, so we're still going inside on the moment. The other generator is quite a way away, so there's two generators here. So let's first of all let's just check that uh, the system the generator is going to run. And once we've got AC power coming here, we haven't got it yet. We'll put the nice face off somewhere, so we'll check that and then we'll get the batteries up to start the speed. So checking the inverter, you need to check the, the system is running. In fact this one has got E405 and 2130. Now I know E405 um, needs to be updated. In fact what I'll do is I've got here uh, a copy of the data logger. So this is the data logger. So I'm going to listen to GSM data logger. These are great because there's nothing to do. Just fit the thing in and um, we'll be good to go. This whole, this is a, if you remove the cover and then this will plug straight in and the, the beauty of the GSM one it will work straight away there's nothing else to do so we'll, 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 we'll set the GSM make sure this logs onto the network and then I will send a message across to the engineer um, to remotely update the system we basically put the data logger in it's a GSM data logger um, the thing with the GSM you don't have to do anything, um, but there's very little indication on it. I've just been talking to the engineer, and basically, um, it didn't come online. It, it, it has just come online. Thank goodness, <laughs> I was looking at it. We've, we've had to wait about 20 minutes for the GSM to come online, so it's online now, and we're updating it. So we'll update both the operating system, and we'll update the. Um, the MC, the uh, LCD, which is the UI, so we update both the MCU and the UI, so both will be updated. It should take about 20 minutes. It's actually quite cold in the UK, despite the sunshine. Um, it's probably about five or six degrees, so hence wearing a, ja with a, a jumper. So let's see how we get on, and hopefully we'll have it updated, and we can start programming it, everything up then. So it's quite good. Took the upgrade. Well, long day, <laughs> longer than I thought. I thought we'd be here for an hour. So we've updated the software, which took forever because we're in a remote location, but we did actually manage to do it with the GSM dongle. Also, um, we set everything up and I profiled it to operate the generator at nice and certain hours. And I sat here being totally baffled why it wouldn't work. And I realized I forgot to set the date on the unit, the time. So uh, the time was set and untick synchronization because then it was synchronized to the wrong time zone. So untick synchronization uh, and basically I then set the time. Time is now operating, generator is switched off. So it looks like everything is going to work fine. Come six o'clock, um, generator will start up if the battery is at a certain level. All good. Thank you. Well, back here um, in the workshop, long day, long day. Um, that was yesterday. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't do most of the program, which I really wanted to show on the screen because the inverse was in such a bad position uh, and the sun was shining on it. You just couldn't see anything. And moreover, um, they had a, a, an additional generator that they were using for power. So once we got everything set, set up, then you suddenly see it was quiet. This is one of the benefits of having an inverter battery system. You could turn the generator off, fantastic. Um, I hope you saw the flow that happened. We, we, we initially, we tested the generator, contacts closed and open, generator stopped, start. So we knew the ATS was working. We wired the batteries in, we checked the communication was good on the batteries. Um, we prior, absolute top priority, bottom right-hand corner icon, the navigation page to show that there's good communication on the batteries. That was also very important. We had to do an update, it took forever. Um, we were in a poor reception area. Hindsight, we should have done the update before the inverter left um, the, the, the warehouse or, or, or our workshop. Unfortunately, the client took the inverter themselves, so we couldn't do the update. So my top tip, update the inverter and check the update before you get on site. It's much easier. 
and it saves an awful lot of problems, especially if you're in a poor reception area. So that was the only thing that we had. I've done a, a, a manual, I think it's about 30 pages, just going about generator, using generator with our inverter. I hope it's useful. And I've covered most of the points um, which, which I discussed on it in terms of wiring of the connectors. And there's two connections on it, there's GS and GV. Um, I'm trying to explain a little bit about the difference, but um, which ones you should use. But nevertheless, we, we wired it all up. We set the time of use and it worked a treat. Absolutely treat. I just got a call today. Um, I set it to come on, at, uh, start the generator if, if the power hit 29%. And the um, our customer uh, called me and I said, oh, we got a problem. I said, what's the problem? The generator never started. What's the what's the state of charge? 35%. We go, yeah, okay, well, it's all set to be, it's going to be low 30. Called me a, bit, a little bit longer and said, yep, the working is 29%. And then apparently his customer um, was a bit unsure, but all good. Anyway, it's great. No problems at all. Came on and we set it to, to switch off at 40%. So on the time of use on the controller, we set for 40%. And what we've done is after, later on in the day, towards the end of the day, there's nobody there, we'll fully charge the battery. And in fact, what we're thinking about now is, is our customer's thinking about setting it up so he can fully charge the battery about four o'clock in the morning. And so then he's got the whole day and it's quiet, there's nothing happening, the generator's off. So it's a great system, worked well. It was amazing going to such a location. We get there, all we chug, 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 and suddenly silent, nothing. The generator's off, batteries operating, powering everything. They had um, a cafe, a, a coffee shop, and a pizza place, um, some lights and various, and a couple of refrigerators. Um, managed to help run the whole lot, um, two 5.1 kilowatt hour batteries and a 3.6 kilowatt um, hybrid inverter worked an absolute treat. So any questions, uh, contact me, feel free, but I will highly recommend this inverter is fantastic to use with a generator. One other thing, when you get your gen set, buy a good gen set, don't buy a rubbish one. And also make sure your gen set is powerful enough, a rough guide. If you're using a 3.6, double the power for the gen set. So you want say a seven or a 7.2 and so on and so forth. So you, you, you look to double the power of the generator um, because the generator has to supply the power and charge the batteries. So you need to get something which is pretty powerful. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, one of my short trips out and keep in touch. Thank you.